Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Petros Fare. In this computer science video, I'll take you through Python programming. Python is a high level computer programming language. As you know, there are two types of levels. We have low level languages and then we have high level languages. In low level languages, we do have the machine language, which is in form of binary, zeros and ones. And at the same time, we have the assembly language. We there are several high-level programming languages which are there, such as Java, C++, Python, BASIC, and many others. So in this section, we are going to be concentrating on Python programming. It is very interesting to note that Python is a very widely used programming language in schools and also universities across the globe. So you should find it very exciting to create codes in this language. What is the Python programming environment? So if you do not have Python on your computer, I would highly recommend that you download Python from python.org. So you download version three, should be three point something, 3.6 there about. Then after downloading, you will open Python and then you are going to start working. We are going to start creating our very first Python program. As you open Python, the IDLE, you are going to have a screen that looks like this. You can also use the online version of Python. You simply type Python online, it gives you a platform where you can create and run programs side by side. But we are going to use the program running from this computer just to make sure that we are uh, well versed with the basics in terms of how this programming starts. To create a new program, you click File, then click New File. As you click New File, you will have this window which will pop up. So I'm going to run these windows um, side by side just to make it easy. For us to understand a program is a code it's a set of instructions so as we create a program we are simply instructing the computer to do what we want you are aware that computers will depend on the input that users to give so we are going to create our very first program in Python First, it is important that if I want to display anything on the screen of the user, I will use the instruction print. So I'm going to start a program to simply print. Now remember, all instructions in Python are in, have to be written in small letters. So I'll write my first instruction to say, print welcome to my program. So we are going to start this section by creating a program that can be used to calculate the sum of two numbers. So I will type in print because I want information to be displayed on the screen. So whatever I display on the screen, I have to say print, then open bracket, and I have to put speech marks between that information. Whatever I type in these speech marks will be displayed as the way according to the way I type so I'm simply going to say welcome to my first program okay so if I say welcome to my first program and I have to close the speech mark and close the bracket like that I can actually run this so always you are supposed to save your program even if you go to run run will simply first get you to save the program so since this is my first time i'm going to save my program you identify a location where you are going to be saving all your programs i will advise you create a folder and that folder identify it perhaps um, with what you are going to be doing so i am going to create a folder in my documents with the name python so these are my python programs which i am going to create and i'll all be setting them in there okay so this is my first program and i will name it calculator right 
so this is the calculator program that I am creating let's see how it works so after saving I can run my program how do I run my program I will simply go to run and choose run module or I can use F5 to run this program so if everything is correct in this section you see it is executed my program and it says welcome to my program now that is our first statement which we have done what does the program do the program should allow us to save I mean to enter two numbers and then calculate the sum of the two numbers for me to calculate the sum of the two numbers, I need the two numbers from the user. So I am going to create variables. A variable is a holding place for data. So when I create a variable, I am going to put a certain piece of data in it. And we do have different types of data which is there. We have numbers. If we have numbers, remember numbers, we have integers, which are whole numbers. Then we also have real numbers. Real numbers are decimal numbers. So in this case, we are going to request the user to enter the numbers. So I am going to simply say a variable that I'm going to have is my first number. So number one. So number one, in number one, I am going to put a number. So if I know that my numbers are integers, I will use int as the instruction to accept integers. So what is going to happen is the instruction or the command that allows the user to enter data is called input. So we are going to now say int input. Then I will put in brackets, please enter the first number. So this is, please enter the first number. Remember this information or this message is what it will be displayed on the screen as the user is using this program all programs need to be user friendly so you can create several programs but one of the things which is key all programs need to be user friendly they have to communicate and ask the user to do something now as you have seen when i have this section INT, I opened brackets twice. So in Python, if I open brackets twice, I also have to close them twice. So double brackets for double opening here. Okay, so I'm going to say number two. This is my second number. So I will say INT. What is necessary is to just know that, okay, if I want to input something, I need a variable. And what is the variable? The variable is the um, holding place, the place where I want to keep my data. So you cannot input anything without giving a place. So this is now the second number. All right. So we close and double brackets there. So what needs to happen? We have our two numbers. The computer is already holding our two numbers. So the next thing is we need to add these numbers. Now you have to ask yourself, where do I add? I need a variable. A variable is a holding place where I am going to keep my answer. So I can call my variable sum. But sum is a reserved command. So I will not use sum because the computer will not allow me to use a reserved word as my variable. So I can actually call it total. Please remember, when I am having total in this case, I am going to say in total put. The equal sign means put in total. So what are we going to add? I will add number one plus number two. As you can see, the spelling for number one should be the same. If I write in small letters on the first part, it has to be in small letters. If I put a capital letter on this part, it will flag it as an error. Now we have calculated our, num our, our total. What should we do? The computer is calculated, but now it has to tell the user what the answer is. And what do we use to display information? We are going to use the print command. So print and 
we are going to say the total is now what we are going to do right now what we are doing we are literally telling the computer to bring out but we don't just want an answer we want some information together with the answer so that's the reason why i have typed this and put it in speech marks whatever i put in speech marks will be shown as it is if i'm writing this program in spanish i will put my instructions in spanish if i am writing this in arabic or in germany any other language it has to be the way that it is so i'll put a comma there then i'll put my variable total remember my to total is where i have put my answer let us run and see if this program really works so we are running moju if i run moju it will ask me to save i will say okay so we do have the first number and this first number let's say 12 12 is our first number the second one is 13. so we can actually test to say okay what is 12 plus 13 the answer must be 25. let's try it and see what happens so the total is 25. so this is working i want us to quickly have a look we are going to modify our program we are going to change the type of numbers that we are going to enter what are the types we are going to run this and i will deliberately enter decimals so that we see what will happen so i'm going to enter 4.5 plus so i will enter and what error has come up there is an error and this error is about the input so 4.5 it is actually indicating that this is not the type of data that we have asked to enter what must we do then if we are going to be using decimals you will type in float so instead of int int only accepts integers so i will advise as long as you are not so sure use float for all numbers if you're entering temperature you're entering weight anything that will be involving decimals we have to use float so let us now try and see if this will solve our problem what we have just done there is called debugging debugging is a process of eliminating errors from a program so let's try and see how this program works mm, i will now put 4.5 and see if it will be accepted yes it's been accepted the second number i'm going to put 5.3 right so our final answer is 9.8 done so this is how programming works we tell the computer what to do and it does exactly what we want we can go on developing our program further please take note as we are doing these things you should master or you should understand these concepts of programming what we need we need to use print we need to use variables and also your choice of variables must be in such a way that the variable names are meaningful they have to be related to what you are doing so let's modify this program again we don't just want this program to end on total but we want it also to calculate the average between the two numbers how do you calculate average you add the two numbers and find the average so i will need a variable that i am going to call average so we are calculating our average by dividing total by two when we divide total by two we have found our average but is it enough remember when you have calculated your average the computer still have to tell the user so how do we tell the user we are supposed to print the answer so print I can simply say print average here let's just say print average and see what happens so we are going to run and as we run this program we are now going to have our two numbers let's have the first number is 12 and then the next number is going to be 14 12 plus 14 obviously it gives us 26 the average is 13 but i want you to look it is not telling us anything other than just giving us 13 
So what must we do? In this case, we need to make the program to communicate. So we are going to include a message that says the average the average is then we open speech mark we close the speech marks put a comma there let's test now and see what is going to happen so we are going to enter our first number and this first number is going to be um maybe we can have 12 and also 14 like we have done so instead of giving us just 13 it is now communicating and telling us that the average is 13. This is how programs are created. You can do this for temperature. You can do this for any operation that you would want to do. Because computers simply work based on what you tell them to do. Can we modify this program further? Let's say we are going to create a program that will add three numbers so instead we are going to create another statement just for the sake of time i will copy this statement here then i will change this variable i will call this variable number three so this is going to be my third number okay so this is my third number what is going to happen if we have three numbers total in this case was calculating two numbers so check this. This is how mistakes sometimes happen. I might have correct input, but I will have a wrong answer. How can I then tackle this issue? So I can have my first number. In this case, I have 4. The second one is 6. The third one is 14. Now, what has happened? The total is 10 and average is 5. How should we solve this problem? Please, help me out. We need to modify the instruction of adding. So we are supposed to change here and say number 3. Is it only in total? Let's run and see. So we are running this program and it's going to give us, let's say, 4 is the first number, 6 is the second one. And we are going to have 16 as the third one. 26 is our total. Average is 13. Alright. But is the average for three numbers 13? There is a problem. We can check again and modify. So this is what programmers do. When you have created your program, you need to test it extensively just to make sure that it is solving the problem that you want. Sometimes you can get the answer, but getting the answer does not mean everything is correct. It could be a problem somewhere. So by correcting this, let's try and run now and see if we will have our expectations. We are going to run this program. Let's see what happens now. Please enter the first number, 4, 6, and then the next one is 16. You see that now our average is correct this is what programming is all about we have just dealt with entering numbers in this case three numbers and then we find the total and then average this could be marks in a, um, after an exam and then you are calculating staff are using this method or this program to calculate the sum of total marks and also the average but then imagine if we had 10 numbers are we going to keep saying input number one number two number three that will be more of a repetition we will soon check a method that can allow us to repeat and in computing terms we call anything that we repeat in iteration we can repeat in Python using a while do or a for. We use for when we know how many times we are going to repeat. We can use a while if it's unlimited. But before we do that, I want us to look at another level of this program. We are going to check 
we want the computer to tell us let's say if this is a test that students have written three papers and we find an average each paper is out of 100 out of 100 then meaning when the average we want it to evaluate for us if the average is 50 or more it should tell us that the student passed so how are we going to do that we are going to add an instruction which called if this is called a selection so if if what we are going to say if average is equal to so it's greater and equal to so greater than or equal to if we want it greater than only we just use the greater than sign so greater than or equal to 50 what do we want it to do in the end we are supposed to put full colony so when we enter it will indent for us so we want the computer to tell us if the average is greater than or equal to 50 it should tell us what remember when the computer is telling us it is printing so it is now going to tell us pass okay so we close the bracket there what happens when it is not greater than or equal to 50 so we are going to say else since we have two conditions only we will say else we print fail so this is what we want the computer to do for us it is going to evaluate and then after evaluating it will tell us the outcome let us run this program to see how things work so we're going to run this to always ask us to save right there is a problem where is this problem there is definitely a problem it's a syntax error they we opened speech mark there and then we didn't put the closing speech mark so let's check and see if this will work. So we are now running this program. So please enter the first number. So this since this is uh, a mark, let's enter passing marks first. 75. The other one is 60. And then we do have an 80. Okay. So it now tells us the average is 71.6. That's a pass let's try it again and see we are going to mix our numbers first paper it will be an 80 second one is going to be a 60 let's say the third one is a 40 okay the average is 60 then that's a pass can we now test and see what will happen if the student fails we have maybe 30 45 and then 20 it says fails so we can actually tell that this is serving the purpose that we have intended it to this program is working as per expectations we can modify some things if you can check here the first number there is at least it could be fine if we can have a space okay so we can go in after the word number we can put a space so that it will leave space for us before we enter the next number so all these places we are going to use space we might actually also include a statement that will allow the user to type their name so we are going to have a variable which is called name equals to so since name is not a number we are not going to use int or float we will just use input input then we will put the message for inputting so we want we can simply say please enter your name okay so this is the instruction that will be displayed on the screen sometimes we can say please enter your name but the second time we can now tell the user to simply say enter without saying please again because you don't want it to be more of a repetition okay so we can do that and after we have done that let us run instead here we are now going to include the name so we want it to print the name also 
So we are going to say, we wanted to say Petros passed or Petros failed. So here, before we type the word passed, we are going to say Petros, which is, our name is called name, which is the variable. Okay? So we want the computer to tell us that the person, so we put the variable in the comma. Let's run and see if we are going to get some success in our program. Let us run this program and see. So the name is Petros. The first number is 85, second one 63, 55.6. So you see, it now tells us Petros passed. So our program is getting more user friendly as much as possible. We can now do the same thing again. Let's try when it fails and see if it will give us our expectations. So we have 40, and we have 45, 30. That's the third one. So it is now saying Petros failed. Our program is working. I want you to post this video. Go through Open Python, try to code. You have to repeat the same process over and over again until you develop your skills and knowledge i want you to be able at the end of the day to do this without even checking your first program do it while you refer to this but then your second the third one you have to start now remembering what do i do when i'm entering a number what do i do when i'm entering text and what do i do when i want to evaluate some results and you i want to print some things according to the conditions that i want to do so post the video and try to code welcome back we are now going to develop our program further remember here we are just dealing with numbers which could be marks but this could actually be modified to be a program to find the average temperature so what we are going to do, we are going to modify our program and what it is going to do for us is to find the average temperature. So we are now going to say welcome to, we are now going to say the temperature program. The temperature, this is going to be used in a hospital. Okay, so this is going to be the temperature program. The reason why I am just... Um, editing on this is I we want to save time but when you are creating programs I don't want you to edit I want you to start from scratch so that it helps you okay instead of the name here I want the user to enter the station name okay so our temperature is going to be so temperature one we can have our temperature two which is the second one and we have the third temperature all right so this is what we have done so the first enter the station name so we are going to say enter the station enter the station name okay okay that's a repeat over there so in this case we are going to say the first temperature this could actually be a patient who has arrived and then we want to take three consecutive temperatures so that we can um, check if uh, there is a problem so instead of number here we have the second temperature so we have our third temperature here so this temperature we want to say if the average temperature the average temperature so we say total temperature is okay so the average temperature is now for temperature we want it to evaluate that if this average is greater than 38 we want it to say Patrick 
or Petros has fever. Okay? So, likely has fever. What about if it is, we can have a situation where we say if it is equal to 37. Okay? So, we are going to say since we have three categories that we are going to use, so we will use L if to evaluate the temperature again. L if temperature which is the average temperature greater or equal to 37. Obviously, it won't be above 38 because we have already taken care of the 38 option. So we want it to say here's no more temperature. Okay. The last one now will be else. Since we have three conditions that we are dealing with, we are simply said the third one is going to be else, which means it means it's not above 38. It's not 37 and above. Perhaps it is 36. Okay. So we just wanted to print a message to say uh, print. Then we say name. Okay. So our name it's going to be okay yes temperature below 37 then we close the speech marks there so this is what we want the um it's a station perhaps for weather then we can adapt it to be in a clinic according to really what we want remember on in this section we still also have to change this is we changed this to temperature one plus temperature two plus the temperature three the reason i'm changing is your variables have to be meaningful it has to be related to what you problem you want to solve so let's try and see there is a problem where is the problem Closing bracket. All right. So we are having, we close today. Let's see. This is the Doha station. First temperature of our first patient, perhaps, you know, was that. And then we have um, the second one, which is 37. The third one is 39. There is a problem. Where is the problem? You can tell in our calculation on this part. Total, we added total. Temperature 1, but here we had made a mistake. Instead of 1, we said 1,1. One, one. So anything that you do will uh, affect the running of your program. So let's see if this will give us what we want. 36 please enter the third temperature have you seen what i have done on name i entered the temperature there so there is an issue on that part let us now run our program and see so on station this is doha the first temperature is 37, second one 38, 36. There is a problem here. And what is the problem? The spelling for temperature. Let us now run our program and see how it works. If it works, remember our variables must be consistent. So let's start. Um, the name, we do have Doha. And then our first temperature is 38, second one is 37, third is 38. Right, our program has worked, but until this section, what is the problem in this section? You see here above here, we said station. If we are using station, then on this we are supposed to print station. So we are supposed to say station on that part. But if we want to use name for the sake of time, we are going to change this to name 
and then we run and see if this is going to work because it was looking for a variable which was not there so let us use maybe a person's name in this case I will say Petros and then these are the temperatures then it says Petros has no more temperature all right you can try it again with a temperature which you know will fall below and I am going to use a temperature okay let me try to use um, a name okay let me take my wife's name precious so the first temperature is 37 the second one is 37 the third one is 38 so precious has no more temperature what about testing it with something low we are going to test with uh, something that is low and then we are going to say massa and the temperature is 36 37 36 and 37 then it says massa has temperature below 37 okay so this is it about programming can you start now to create programs of your choice maybe programs to find the weight you might just have one input and then when you have one input you can evaluate that input try to solve as many different scenarios when you are multiplying you use a star for multiplying all right we are now going to move to another level of programming we are now going to deal with uh, repetitions what we call iterations in programming sometimes you can be given a program and this program wants you for example we are going to be creating a program where we will enter five consecutive numbers so what is going to happen is we use an iteration we are going to start our program maybe with print okay then we simply can say it's the average weekly temperature so we want to say weekly temperature so this is the program to find the average weekly temperature so we are going to print and after printing what do you need seven temperatures entered and then you find the total of those temperatures so because we are going to find the total this total is going to have to be changing each time okay what we are going to do is we are going to use four okay we are going to say for x in the range so the range for a week is zero up to zero comma seven but in this case is zero up to six because if we start counting at zero so let's see we are going to say a variable called temperature then we are now going to say float remember float helps us to enter decimals so inputs then we open this and we say please enter temperature okay so this is it we are supposed to close twice there when we have entered temperature remember what we want to do we want to find the average weekly temperature so we need a total a variable called total but this variable called total is a variable which when we repeat entering it has to keep it has to keep adding up whatever temperature we enter so this variable we need to enter it as total but we are going to use total plus temperature so every time we run it it has to keep adding up from the previous total when we are having a variable like that we have to initialize it by putting zero in it because when we are accumulating totals in a variable we need to initialize it and start by putting zero in it so when we have done this this must actually be the end of the loop to end the loop you just quit the indenting and go to the left after you have done this now you can calculate your average and this average is going to be total divided by what 
divided by 7. That is for the weekly. So print. We are going to print. Remember, our commands have to be always in small letters. Print. Then we say the average average weekly temperature is then we close the speech marks and put a comma here and say average okay remember print needs one bracket let's run this and see how it works we are going to save and we are saving in a folder called python programs where we saved the first one which was calculator so this is now going to be average temperature okay that's the name of the program so let's run it and see please enter the temperature we have okay 40 Let's see if it will give us seven times. 32, 35, 36, 2, 4, 5, 35, 38. How many do we have now? How many did it allow us to enter? 2, 4, 6. Which means we need seven weekly temperatures. The answer is correct according to the number that we entered. But how can we get seven? We are going to modify and put a zero there. Zero up to seven. Okay? Because one to seven gave us six. So zero to seven will give us, because computers will always start counting at zero. Let's run and see. First one, 38, 41. It's a very hot week. Where temperatures went as far as 50. And then we have 36. How many temperatures entered? 2, 4, 6, 7. So this command 4 helps us to find, uh, to repeat a process. Instead of saying enter temperature 7 times, we will just do it once. And then it will repeat 7 times. And as it repeats, you are calculating in this case. Alright. So you use this um, iteration is a way of repeating a process but there can be moments when you want to repeat 30 what would you do you will change there and put 30 what if you don't know how many to repeat how can I solve that problem if I don't know I can ask the user to tell me how many times they want to repeat so I can simply say this is my number of times so i'll say number then i'm going to say input because this is an integer i am going to open bracket and say input then open bracket please how many temperatures do you have so the user has to enter the how many temperatures they have so when i ask the user i can now say in range 0 to 100 i'm now going to say 0 i mean 0 to 7 but i'm now going to say 0 up to the number so the number which i entered there must be entered on this part so we are going to run this and see if it will give us so on number just for the sake of time what is the problem on this part there is a problem there is a problem double bracket we open two we have to close twice okay so we have to run this let's run and see right so it's accepting to run so how many temperatures three let's enter our temperatures now the first one is 35 second 36 40 does it give us three yes that is great so it's saving for us. If we put 100, it must give us 100 temperatures. So this case, we are asking the user to tell us how many times they want to repeat this program. Okay? 
we can do the same thing again let's say run and now we are going to say how many times five then we have five temperatures 36 35 42 45 45 again five temperatures entered and that is our average we can modify this program and get it to evaluate if maybe there are seven we can give it you know an if statement to say if the temperature if this average is greater than 40 okay then we want it to tell or maybe yeah greater than 40 we want it to remember at the end we have to put full colony we want it to print I wanted to print temperature, high temperature, just like this. Done. Else, okay, we want it to print. These are the normal temperatures. Then we close like that. Let's see if it will do the evaluation for us. Remember, um, programming is all about repeating. Like I was saying, there is a problem here. What is the problem? Let's see if you can pick the, where the problem is. The problem is found there. We need to close this bracket. Run. Right, so how many times? Five. Please enter the temperature. We have 45, 46. This was a very hot tweak. And we have uh, 41. And it says normal. Because the average is what? It's 31. But is this average 31? No. Because we entered 40s out there. There is a problem somewhere where is this problem because it is saying no more temperature it is saying 31 but is it 31 there is a problem here on average initially we were dividing by seven what must we divide by now now that the user has to enter the number of times they are repeating so we need to divide by the number that was entered let's see now if this will solve our problem let's enter everything above okay we are repeating this five times everything above 40. high temperature good will it work for something less let's see four temperatures that we're entering 32 these are winter temperatures Maybe in Doha. And uh, we have 33, 35. No more temperatures. Okay. So this is working. So what have we learned so far? We have learned how to use the four to repeat a process. Always take note. What you are repeating has to be indented under this four. The indentation is what tells the computer that we are repeating everything that is below it. Okay. Even if you are going to be putting a statement under this if, it has to be indented also, but else has to be on the same level with if. There are other ways of doing this. We can use what we call the while loop. So we have seen how the for loop works. So we are going to use the while loop. While works like this. Instead of using for, x in range. We can say x or we can say i here. It doesn't really matter. Okay? We are now going to be using the while loop 
So to use this while loop, what we are going to do, we are going to change this into a while. We are going to introduce a variable that we are going to call counter. This variable is going to be counting for us. So we start counting at zero. So we want a counter that starts at zero. Then the user has to enter how many times, how many temperatures they want to enter. So we are going to say while this counter is less than or equal to the number that the user entered. Okay? We are going to do the following. So we will enter the temperature, we will add that temperature, and we are also supposed to increase the counter, which means we are saying counter is equal to counter plus one. Okay. So this is what is going to loop. When you enter the first temperature, it is going to increase. So it started at zero. For first temperature, it will increase and say one. Second one, two. Third one, three. And it keeps on. So when it gets to this total that we want, it must stop and evaluate. We are now going to try and test and see if this works according to our expectations. So this temperature, how many times? We want to repeat it three times. So our temperature, first one, 35, 36, 38. Right, please enter the temperature. Now is this the fourth one? All right, so average weekly temperature is 47. Is that correct? No. This, it is given us four times when we want three because we ended three so we need to change here instead of less than or equal to we say it is less than so that when it gets to because it will start our counter is starting at zero if we want to put counter one there it will now we put an equal sign let's check our average is average being calculated correctly okay divided by number that must be fine. Let's check and see. Run. So 3, 35, 36, 38. Good. So it has calculated for us. So if we put this number, it will stop according to what we want. So this is how the while does. While can be used sometimes when you know or when you don't even know how does it work if i don't even know i'm going to modify this just look at this one i will change this one instead of inputting the number there the person is going to input temperature and down here we are going to have instead of inputting we want the person to say to stop this program someone must input 100 we know temperature will never be 100 if while the temperature in this case we are going to say is not 100 so we will tell the user to enter 100 for temperature so if i want to say is not this is how i type is not exclamation mark with an equal sign it's not equal to 100 so we are going to put a message up here to tell our users that to stop this program, enter 100 as temperature. To stop this program, enter 100 as temperature. So when it starts, that is the message that is going to be displayed. All right to stop this program okay so what is going to happen we will now enter our first temperature this statement will request the first temperature if this temperature is 100 nothing will happen here okay so if this temperature is what is 100 nothing is going to happen okay so that is one of the things that we have added here. 
But inside here, when we repeat, we are going to add total counter, but we need another temperature to be entered before it goes back. So it's going to loop the following statements. Let's try that and see how it works. Run. Please enter the temperature. Let's say 100. Now it is asking us to enter temperature again. While the temperature is not, why is it asking us to do the same thing? 35. There is a problem somewhere. Let's check and see where this problem is. So we are going to kill this and check. So it has asked us to enter this temperature, then total while counter. You see here, we were saying counter. We want what? Temperature. In this case, while the temperature. So you see, the program may work, but it is not solving the problem. So you need to, as a programmer, you need to be very careful to make sure it is saving your purpose. So let's enter 100. So nothing happened because it went down straight away to find the average and in total there was a zero and the in number there was nothing. What are we supposed to divide with here? We are supposed to divide with the counter. So in this section, average must be divided by counter because counter will be the total temperature that we have entered. Let us now run our program and see. Okay, please enter the temperature. Okay, let's make uh, 40, 35, and 50. Then the next one, I'm going to put 100 to see if the loop will stop. Yes, the loop has stopped. Okay. And then it gives us our temperature and it says high. All right. So everything is okay here. What about if it is 100? What's going to happen? Okay. If it is 100, let's run it and check. If we start by 100, there is an error. Where does the error come from? When it is 100, it won't do this. It goes straight on this part. Average, okay, is equal to total divided by counter. Total is 0. In this case, counter is 0. In mathematics, zero divided by zero is not possible. Okay, so it gives you an error. But what we can see for now, our loop is able to stop. And when we are entering normal temperatures, everything works according to expectations. Temperature is 50, 48. These are Middle Eastern temperatures when it really gets hot high temperature what about if it is low let's use a lower range temperature 35 34 then 100 no more temperature done it is time for you to practice take time to practice because programming skills can only be developed through practice